Great to have you with us. Now, three districts in the northern region are currently grappling with the threat of an outbreak of meningitis. Two deaths have been recorded in Zapsugu and another in Tateli Sanguli district. One case has been recorded at Yendi. In all, 16 cases have been recorded in the three districts. Uh, let's get you more details of this one and this uh, details that we have now. In the Zabzugu district, there are a total of nine cases. In the Tatali Sanguli district, there are a total of six cases. In the Yendi municipality, there's a total of one case. Now, those are the cases reported. So those are the 16 cases in the breakdown. For deaths, we have seven deaths, sorry, six deaths recorded. The breakdown is as follows. Two in the Zabzugu, in the Zabzugu district, two in the one in the Tatale Sanguli, and um, we have oh, sorry there are three deaths. We have a number of them also who have been discharged. Now the interesting thing is that all those who were reported dead were females. On admission treatment or treatment are ten, and recovered and discharged are three. So that's sixteen cases, three dead. Three discharged, ten still on admissions and treatments. Now, as we may know, um, the signs and symptoms of meningitis are fever, headache, neck stiffness, or neck pain. Now, we understand that the Ghana Health Service in that district has requested for support from sister agencies in other districts and also uh, asking about education in these areas. Now we have the messages that you need to have in mind are that you sleep in well-ventilated rooms. Windows should be open to allow fresh air into the rooms. Avoid overcrowding at home uh, in the rooms and in other public places. Right, so that's, that, those are the details really. 16 cases, 3 dead, 3 have been discharged. All are limited to uh, the 3 northern regions. Now we know that it's as usually associated with this part, this time of the year when it's really dry. Uh, another thing associated with this time of the year uh, are fires. Now traders at the Odona pedestrian mall are still counting their losses from last night's fire that gutted their shops. Uh, though it's not clear what sparked the blaze, some traders and residents are attributing it to a number of issues, including people sleeping and cooking in the market. The traders who, who say goods worth millions of Ghana cities have been lost tell Joy News they have been victims of previous fires at the same market. My colleague Nancy MFA Jadosi was there this morning and reports. Cosmetics, pampers, Sanya Menina, it's me crime me for another six thirty in Pokrabo. You caught no fear, me jolly way up and a corner by a say, you see Jada market in him. A Jada market in a heifer, yes, baby, I want no, on a Janada. Then what are the crime say I'm at the buyer and Paramina by a bedroom? That's a dear Janice Delano. Yes, yes, well, BM, BM, Yanya BM, maybe I see, I see back four years at the same year. And I am my Mibarri Saya, a Bayer Hamaye, and will be I in the container, yet this is his one. And I saw Sassi Biamuno, I saw Sassi Biamuno, I saw Sassi Biamuno, Minaba. Well, she says that she actually deals in cosmetics, she deals in a lot of products in the shop and as you see everything everything has been completely bent in the shop totally <laughs> The vice and chairman for this particular area, uh, Mr. Legend, that the fire started by somebody cooking here in the market. Apparently, the person left the fire, the, the food on the fire, uh, and then as a result of that, the the, the gas there was a gas explosion, according to you, and then it spread throughout the market via the electricity. Well, I don't know. I, I cannot say that is what exactly happened, but at least that is what an eyewitness here. Um, is now, police in Kumasi are on the hunt for a 21-year-old squatter for allegedly stealing a colleague's baby. 
patients and Anne reportedly disappeared with Abuna Kubile's six-month-old child put in her care temporarily by the ice water cellar. Now, a disturbed teenage mother is confident of finding her son, though she has no clue how. Nani Aljima traced her to a slum at Mbrom from where he filed this report. <laughs> Seventeen-year-old Abuna lives every day with the hope of reuniting with her son she has not seen since last Sunday. She gazes at the suspect's health insurance card in all desperation, wondering where she is by now. <laughs> She says, I begged her to watch over my son while I go take some water for sale. She told me the boy looks hungry and I gave her permission to give the boy some food. People who saw her told me she was all over the place with my son. When I came later, I was told she took my child behind the house. One woman told me she had a conversation with her about how easy it would be to steal my son. Abna arrived in Kumasi from Sefidebiso about two weeks ago, hoping to make a better living to cater for her son, whose father is unknown. She sourced water in the central business district amid the pain of losing the child. She is nonetheless expectant of reuniting with her son, using the suspect's identity card as her weapon. Leaving one's child in the care of the other is common here, but for Kubla, Abna, things went wrong. She still has hope of seeing her child once again with the identification card of the suspect. A lot of people here are of the same view that this suspect will be found sooner than later. It is unclear where patients Anane and the innocent baby are, though she is said to be a native of Atebubu in Bono Ahafo region. She put up for a month in a toilet facility under construction at an area known as Kwamianchi, named after late chairman of the GPRTU. Residents say she had tried unsuccessfully to secure a job. They say all attempts to reach her on phone have proved futile because the device is apparently switched off. Abner's sympathizers believe patients could be hiding in and around her hometown, Atebubu. Desperate mother can only continue to hope for a miracle to see her son again. Nana Ojima reporting. From one crime to another, and the Criminal Investigations Department has started investigations into unraveling the circumstances leading to the shooting of a team member of Anas Army or Anas's investigative team, Tiger IPI. The investigators, numbering 15, are picking vital information and speaking to first responders and eyewitnesses. Some family members who spoke to Joy News on condition of anonymity say they saw the assailants lurking around the community on a motorbike hours before the shooting. The deceased, Ahmed Hussein Swale, was shot in the chest and neck yesterday in his car. He died on the spot. My colleague, Masor Agbagba, is currently at the scene and he joins me via phone with more. Maxwell, what more have the eyewitnesses been telling you? Well, um, Daniel, as you rightly mentioned, um, a lot of them, almost all of them, to, um, at least, you know, saw uh, the um, assassins. Um, one of the women that I've been speaking to today um, told me um, that they actually saw them um, resting on a bench about 100 meters away from where um, the deceased family house, you know, is located. That bench is actually still here. We are told they parked um, their motorbike for some time, rested on it, and then waited um, for the deceased, you know, to pull up. Uh, we are told the deceased was actually going to pick um, um, his child, who was sick, um, to the hospital. Just when um, he pulled up um, very close to the house, then the assassins walked towards him and then shot him, um, killing him in the process. And then his leg was still on the accelerator, even as he was in the car. So the car actually accelerated um, for uh, about 100 you know, meters away from where uh, he had parked, moved uh, towards the street, across the street, and then hit um, the hair salon um, some you know, meters away from uh, where you know, he was parked. A lot of the people we've been speaking to 
said they had the gang talk, but they thought, you know, um, it was a dark So just when they came out, the act, um, the assassins had, you know, fled uh, the scene. And today, if you can hear, um, family members um, actually um, seated here. A lot of them did not uh, go to work today. They are seated and kind of they are planning the final summer, right? Of the, uh, they would they, they would have um, his buried today. Uh, police say um, there are some processes they would have to go through before they can um, release um, the um, body. Um, but um, some of the people we're speaking to are saying that uh, they are hoping that by tomorrow the body will be released them for uh, uh, for, for burial to take place according to you know um, Islamic you know custom and tradition. Now speaking of the police, Maxwell, have they been telling you anything? Well, they would not speak to us. They would not give us any information about um, this particular case of what we saw. We saw some people from the Criminal Investigations Department, about 15 um, CID personnel um, coming here to pick very vital information uh, 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 and evidence that would help them be able to uh, uh, narrow or zero in on the um, purpose. But they wouldn't speak to us. The divisional commander of Medina wouldn't speak to us. Um, the head of the CID team that came here also would not give us any information was so, you know, ever. Thanks, Maxwell Agbagba. He reports live from the scene of the crime. Let's now bring you the latest on this story. Anasis Tiger IPI team has spoken. They just released a statement, which is now on your screen. It says, uh, Ahmed Hussein Swale, an investigative journalist and team member of Tiger IPI, was last night assassinated at Medina by two gunmen on a motorbike while driving home. The two unidentified men fled after shooting Ahmed at close range, twice in the chest, once in the neck, killing him instantly, according to police investigations at Medina. The body has since been conveyed to the police hospital mortuary in Accra. It says, we commiserate with Ahmed's family on this painful loss and pray that Allah will give them the strength to bear the grief. We at Tiger IPI are terribly devastated by the dastardly act but remain unshaken in our resolve to pursue nation records and make corruption a high-risk activity in the country. We call on the security agencies to unmask the elements behind this assassination and bring them to book. So it ends with um, a short brief about Tiger IPI, and it says Ahmed was an excellent, experienced investigative journalist with our team. His last assignment was number 12. That exposed bribery and corruption and commissions in African football. We are looking forward to an Islamic burial. Now, meanwhile, lawyer for investigative journalist Anas Arimi or Anas Kisie Jabing has called on police to query a sin North member of parliament, Kennedy Japong, but stopped shy of accusing him of being behind the killing of Tiger IPI's undercover investigator, Ahmed Hussein Swali. Now, Ahmed was shot three times, as we just read in the statement, twice in the chest and another in the neck late last night at Medina whilst driving home by unidentified men riding a motorbike. He was one of uh, Tiger IPI's undercover journalists whose photographs Mr. Japan circulated in his Who Watches the Watchman documentary. Kisie Jabing is lawyer for Anas Armio Anas. As I said, I'm a lawyer, I deal with evidence. I'm not saying that the certain number of women ask people to go kill him. That is not what I'm saying. Be it far for me that I'll ever suggest that. But I'm saying that that reckless conduct of sitting on your media, putting out a young man's picture there, inviting the world to go beat him up and that you'll be responsible and pay for it, he should ask questions. The finger that can be pointed at him is that uh, he, should, he should be called to explain why he did what he did. And if a few months later, the young man has been killed in such some circumstances, he has questions to answer. It is not an accusation, but he is the one who invited the world to beat him up. He has been killed now. So when you Someone should ask him questions. So when you say someone should ask him questions, you'd the like... The authorities, mm. of course. Okay. The authorities should ask him questions. A man claims no one is above the law. He cannot also be above the law. No one is above the law. Should be asked questions. Since you want someone to ask him questions, would you be lodging an official complaint with the authorities? Well, I advise ourselves on that. Okay, so th that decision has not been made yet. You know, it's not everything that I put out in public, but we'll advise ourselves on that. 
developing. Now, what about your client's organization? Clearly, uh, the security implications and the arrangements for your organizations must change. It's, it's aware of all that. It's aware of the risk. And indeed, uh, you pointed out earlier that that's the reason why he wears a mask to begin with. Mm. Uh, and so he doesn't expose himself and his uh, uh, operatives uh, unnecessarily uh, to uh, public curiosity and public uh, scrutiny. Otherwise, they'll be putting their lives in danger. Uh, and, and so the investigative team is very much aware of all that. And they're, they're taking steps to ensure their further security. So. Kisija, I've been speaking on the Super Morning Show there. Now, what do you do uh, when you're alone on a dark street and a threatening person walks towards you? How can you tell that your friend or loved one intends to cause you harm? Is there ever enough security for your home? Now, in the wake of the recent murders which have occurred, most recent of which is the shooting of the member of Anas Army or Anas's Tiger IPI team, how do you keep yourself and your loved ones safe? Today, the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM asked retired head of operations at the Ghana Police CID, Felix Kokumausi, and he gave these tips. First thing you don't do is to have your earphone in your ear listening to music or news and then playing the ostrich or not caring about the environment because your ears must be open uh, to hear what those people will be saying if it is possible. The next thing you do is that you do not carry uh, anything in your hands. Your hands are free. And the next thing uh, you do in that situation is to walk very confidently. Let your eyes catch the eyes of those people. And uh, you must send a message to those people that you are very strong, you are very big, and you are not a stranger in that environment. You, you definitely need to, to scan your, your area, to scan before you enter the place of abode. Everybody who is approaching his place of residence after work and it is dark, your headlamps must be on. You're live on Joy News today with me, Daniel Daze. Still up ahead, an NDC delegation joins thousands of mourners as the ongoing funeral of Yana Yakubu and Dani in END. In business, Ghana Revenue Authority blames failure to meet 2018 revenue targets on unlawful operations at the port. We'll be back after this. Thanks for staying with us. Now, a delegation from the NDC, led by the party general secretary, Johnson Esedu Nketia, has arrived in Yendi to participate in the ongoing funeral of Yana Yakubu and Dani. My colleague, Justice Beidou, is at the funeral ground uh, now, and he joins us via Skype with the latest. Hello, Justice. Tell us more about this delegation of the NDC that has arrived in Yendi for Yana's funeral. Uh, so, Daniel, this is a very high-powered delegation, I must say, uh, because it has the curb de la curb of the National Democratic Congress, uh, the largest opposition party. Uh, the General Secretary, uh, John Senatelu Ketia, is represented here. The minority leader is here. Um, the chief whip in parliament, um, uh, Muncha Kamubarak, is here. Um, and a host of many members of parliament, I can say, in fact, um, almost all the members of parliament um, of the party um, this side of the country are represented here at the moment. Um, and many, many, and, and, and they are just a few of the um, government delegation. In fact, we are expecting um, the vice president, and who is also expected to lead a, a government delegation to, here, to, to this place uh, this afternoon, um, to also uh, be here at, at this time. But Daniel... It's been a, a memorable event of beautiful show of Dabon culture uh, here today. And many people have been arriving from all uh, different parts of the country. Thousands of people are currently here inside the inner perimeter of the Biwa Palace, uh, climaxing this very historic funeral. I'm going to just go around and 
speak with uh, some of the people who are here. Um, I have with me a young person um, and then also one elder um, of, 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 the, of, of that one who are going to tell me about what you think about today's historic event. What does it mean to you? Uh, yeah, my name is Sintaro Bahama. I'm the National Vice President of the Bank Forum. And I think this is a historical day for the people of Japan, not for the people of Ghana. It is one of the memorable days that all people from the Dagong traditional area are all converging to actually have the final sunrise of the late Yana Yakuba Anton, the second result of the So the atmosphere is sacrificed, it's actually charged, excitement, it's actually charged with marriage, and everybody is very, very excited and part of the whole thing. So you tell me, uh, how old were you in 2002 when they first and then they happened? Well, I'm after making her mama's sister. I have to say, I was so small, very young. I didn't do anything by then. So we can't go for the day. I want to laugh. That was the uh, last week. Unfortunately, we lost justice there. We'll get back to him later in the day. Now, blacksmiths in the northern region town of Yendi, who for years have been accused of producing some of the small arms used in the town's conflicts, say they are turning away from the trade and instead producing farm tools. As the people of Dagbon climax the funeral of their slain king, Yana Yakubu Andani II, my colleague Justice Bedu has been spending time with some of them to find out how a reduction in small arms could help the peace process there and boost business. Smelting the metal in blazing hot fire. These are the blacksmiths of Yendi. Temperatures here around this time of the year are running into well over 40 degrees. The men are drenched in sweat, soaking up the heat from the fire, while they hammer scrap metals into shapes they desire. For years, accused as the ones behind the many small arms used in warfare that have spilled so much blood in towns like Yendi, now they want to clear their name. We inherited this way from our forefathers. It is not meant from. Bawa Bashir, aged 60, has recently retired from his teaching job to take up the trade he grew up learning full time. He has spent years traveling through small villages around Yendi to warn other blacksmiths on the dangers of manufacturing arms. Previously, we were manufacturing uh, bows and arrows and spears. We were, we were able to do it, but nowadays, you see, this is modern time. No one likes to use these things again, so we are not doing it. We realized that it was a harm to us, so we just banned doing the spear. Now, they are manufacturing tools like poles and axes, mainly used in preparing farmlands. This one they used to approve for saga. I am um, sometimes when they are when somebody is going to look for heads. That's why they will normally you can go and fetch that particular thing. Located on the eastern corridor of the country, Yendi used to be a major business boom town connecting traders from as far as neighboring Burkina Faso and Togo to markets in southern Ghana. Now with peace making its way back, breast business like what is happening here may well be on their way back too. At the peak of the conflict, we couldn't even go out, not even think of doing business. Sounds of gunshots everywhere used to scare everyone, especially we the women. I did not lose anyone, but I know many people did. So there is peace coming and we are happy for it. All over Yendi, there's a fresh air that seems to be blowing and many, including one's sworn enemies, want to move on. And for these blacksmiths, it's no to arms and yes to the tools that can help build livelihoods, rather than killing it. Justice Baby, join me, Yendi. 
So let me join you today. My name is Daniel Dazi. Let's take you back to the earlier story of the murder of Ahmed Hussein Swali, the member of the Tiger IPI investigative team led by Anas Army or Anas, uh, because the Ghana Journalist Association is calling on President Ekufado to take personal interest in finding the, the perpetrators of that murder. Parker Wilson is currently at a press conference uh, being held by the GJA. Parker, what else has the GJA been saying? Well, so, Daniel, let me be clear that the DJ is very devastated by what they call those heinous crimes. Now, uh, they cited a series of uh, events that have taken place even before the murder of Ahmed. I mean, they cited the killing of a journalist somewhere in the Ashanti region and, again, the former president. Uh, of DJ in the Shanti region as well, and link the murder of Ahmed to that of um, uh, Kashongi, if you recall. So for them, it has, been, it has become a very worrying trend, and it, it appears journalists are not safe in the country. In fact, mm. their call is that they want the Ghana police service, as a matter of agency and priority, launch a full-scale investigation into the killing right. of Ahmed and that the killers must be made to face the full rigor of the law. Again, they went to Parliament saying that the Parliament, as representatives of the people, to take necessary action that will instill a sense of safety, mm. and not only in the media, but also among the general population of Ghana. So okay. all that they are demanding for today is that they want government, the president, Parliament, to ensure the safety of journalists in this country. Right, Parker, thanks a lot for that. And, 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 and David, just mm. before I go, I, I right. go, Anas just entered the press conference. Anas, I am your Anas, and Stagger IPI just entered the press conference. So I am sure that definitely we'll be having a word from them when uh, the president is done with, 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 with engagement. And we will be here to report that to you when he, indeed he speaks. Parker Wilson, a uh, reporter from the press center, where the Ghana Journalists Association has, is holding a news conference. Now, the latest is that, is that Anas Army or Anas himself just entered uh, the premises of that news conference. Stay with us, we'll bring you the latest. But for now, uh, Daryl Kwao has the latest in business. Stay with us. <laughs> 